In this video, we're going to continue the painting that we started in the last video. Now, we're going to work on the handle, and in particular, as first thing, we're going to focus on this area that for now we're going to paint uniformly. We're going to start bringing on our canvas some dark brown. Also, in this case, probably it's better if we work the background first. So, we're going to continue our work in this area where we're going to blend on the canvas some white and some brown following the border with the teapot. Here, to continue our transition, we're going to increase the quantity of white that we're going to blend with the brown. Using the clean brush, we also start smoothing it, joining this new part with the one we had painted before. Once also this part is complete, we're going to go back working on the handle, filling, as we said, uniformly this area with some burnt amber. And using a clean brush, we're going to work the connection with the background. Now, let's move our attention on this part of the handle. With the only exception for these two reflexes, a good strategy is to paint in black the whole area uniformly. While for the reflexes, we could paint them now or rework them later when the black will be dry. Here we're going to see both cases. We're going to paint one now and one later. For the one on top, we also want to make a short fading between the two colors. We're going to fill the whole area using some black. We have this reflection of the handle on the teapot, so we're going to paint in black also here. We're going to leave empty this area where, using some white, we're going to start working on the reflex and its connection with the black around it. Then, using a clean brush, we're going to work on the short fading. We also start working the border with the top area. And if we make a mistake, we're going to fix it. Like, for example, here, where we're going to use some white to redo this reflex on the brass. We're going to paint uniformly this area using some middle light brown and we're going to work the connection between the different colors we have there. Now, if we move our attention out and we watch what we have done so far, we can notice that this area of the background seems to be quite light, so we're going to correct its color using some burnt amber. Now let's focus on this area of the teapot where on the right we have these reflections of the handle of the apple and of the teapot beak. Then we have this very bright area where the white fade into the dark brown and on the left this area where the teapot is a little bit lighter. So we're going to start painting on the right uniformly with the middle dark brown. We're going to use some dark brown for the handle reflex. For now, we're not going to paint the other two. We're going to lighten up the rest using some tan to turn the steel into brass. In this area, we have to fade the white into the brown. So we're going to bring there a middle step color, in our case, some tan. And we're also going to paint in time, this area where on our teapot we have this reflex. We're going to paint this area uniformly using some dark brown and we're going to fade it with the tan. Then we're going to paint in white here in the middle and we're also going to fade it with the tan. Now, using the clean brush, we're going to fade this line into the dark brown above. We're going to start working on the teapot beak dark side, 
where we're gonna bring some brown. First we're gonna use the dark one and then the middle dark. For now we're gonna stop here and we're gonna focus on this left part of the teapot where we're going to use some middle dark brown. We're gonna join it with this dark area here and we're gonna work on the border with the handle above. Now let's move our attention out to the area that we have painted so far to see if everything fits the scene in a correct way. There are many things that we could correct, but as we said, we don't want to go too deep in our representation on this first work. But there is one place that actually is a mistake, and it's this area here. In our model here, the teapot has a sort of step, while in our representation, we don't have it. Since we did represent the step on the left side, we want to fix this problem to keep our representation consistent. Now, we're gonna complete this part of the background, and we're gonna smooth it using a clean rounded brush. Then, blending it with some brown, we're going to represent the teapot shadow. Let's move our attention on this area of the teapot now. Except for this reflex where we can use some middle dark brown, we can paint the rest of this area uniformly using some burnt amber. And that's what we're going to do. To get the shadow of the teapot on the table, we're going to use some middle dark brown that we're going to correct using some burnt amber. Here on our sketch, we should have a line to mark the shape of the shadow. We forgot to represent it, but it doesn't matter. We're going to stop painting our shadow here, and we're going to continue this area using some tan that we're going to correct with some middle dark brown. We're going to use the burnt amber here, and as we did for the table, we're going to blend some tan with some middle dark brown here to work on this reflex. And we're going to work the border between the two colors. We're going to complete painting uniformly with some burnt amber this area. And then we're going to work its connection with the reflex above. Now, we're going to add some tan on the reflex. And we're going to use a clean brush to smooth its connection with the dark brown around it. If we check this area of the teapot, we can see the reflection of the tablecloth and its waves. We said that we're not going to represent them, so we're going to paint this area uniformly using some tan. We're going to start painting this area on our canvas. Something that we should notice is that uh, to do this job, I'm using a rounded pointed brush, which is actually quite difficult to control to follow the borders and the lines of the sketch. So, as we said, when we have seen how to use the brushes, it's better if we use instead a bright, which has a short bristles that we can control in a better way. We're going to fill the whole area. Let's focus only on this area now. It's a little bit lighter than this brown, and it looks like the dark brown fades into the middle dark brown here. So we're gonna blend some tan here with the brown that we have on the canvas, and we're gonna work the transition that we need. We are also going to work the border between the brown and the tan. Now we can start to work on the cup's reflection on the teapot by bringing on the canvas some gray here, we can bring some white here to work on this light area on the top. Here, our sketch is quite poor, but we don't really need it because we can easily see what we have to do following our model. So, for example, we have this area 
that we can start representing using sun gray working on the connection with the white above and filling the whole area we need. In our sketch we made a mistake because yeah we should have some gray so we're going to cover this line. Unfortunately it's still quite visible so we're gonna bring here some white which is an opaque pigment and it should help us covering the line and correct the tone of the gray. We're also going to bring there some dark brown for the reflex of the coffee and we're going to continue working on the top ring of the cup by bringing some white and go on with the drawing. We can start to bring some light gray here for the cup's bottom plate and continue working the area. Now let's stop for a moment and let's move our attention out to the old part of the scene that we represented so far. It starts already to look like a teapot, although if we check carefully it's completely different from the one in our original scene. And this thanks to what we call the representative analysis. We split our scene in pieces, we check separately every part, and for each piece we make our own strategy based on the fundamentals. So for now let's stop here our representation of the teapot and let's go back to represent the part of the painting on which we should be more familiar with, the piece of silk. This time our approach is different. Before we were free to do what we wanted as far as we respected specific rules. Now we are actually painting it using the representative analysis. So we have to paint the silk waves more or less as we see them. We're gonna break the silk in pieces and for each part we're going to make a strategy on how to represent it and accordingly we are going to paint it. We should notice that on the sketch we didn't do a very accurate job because at the end if we change something on the waves shapes our representation will still look like a piece of silk. So let's start for example here where we have this long dark side fading in this reflection that we are going to represent using some Prussian blue. The first thing that we want to do is to work on the border with the table where we are going to use a rounded brush. And if we make a mistake we're going to fix it, in this case using sun tan here and working on the blue here. Using some middle light blue we're going to start working on this area. We're gonna use a clean brush to work the border with the teapot. We're gonna blend some white here to lighten this part up where in our mode the light gets reflected. Accidentally I've touched the Prussian blue and I brought it inside the white. So we're gonna stop, clean the area and repaint it with some white. In our model here we have this dark area that we're going to represent using some Prussian blue. Then using a clean brush we are going to fade it. We're going to complete this part bringing some middle light blue. We're going to work the connection with the Prussian blue below and complete the rest of the area. We're going to add some extra white here and we can say that for now this area is complete so we can move on. To continue our work we are going to focus on this reflex on the silk. We are going to blend on the canvas some middle light blue and some white. And we are going to work the connection with the Prussian blue. Right below the color becomes darker, so we are going to bring there some middle light blue. We are also going to blend it with some Prussian blue to darken it. Here the color is darker, so we're gonna blend the middle light blue we have there with some Prussian blue. And bit by bit 
following more or less what we have on our model, we are going to complete the whole piece of silk. Also in this case, although we have followed somehow our model, the result on the canvas is completely different, but it still looks like a piece of silk. It's a good idea to work on the table and the connection with the silk while our oils are still not dry. Now that the silk is complete, let's continue our job on the teapot working on the cup reflection. In this case, the teapot reflects the cup dark side, and that's what we're going to represent. We're going to work on the teapot big where we have these lines of different grades of brown. And we're going to continue working on the background. We're going to put some middle dark brown on the canvas and we're going to blend it with some white. And again, we're going to bring some brown and mix it with the white. Then, using a rounded brush, we're going to start smoothing it. We're also going to start to correct the color. For example, here the brown in our transition is too light, so we're going to bring some brown. And with the rounded brush, in this case using a larger size, we're going to blend and smooth them. This time we are actually going to complete the background. While we get to the right, we're going to decrease the quantity of brown and we're going to increase the quantity of white. We're going to fill the old background, leaving empty the area where we're going to paint the carafe. And using a makeup pad, we're going to clean where we made some mistake. At this point, using a large rounded brush, we're going to work and smooth the old background. Also, in this case, the background we just painted is completely different from the one in our scene. Not only we have removed the fabric waves, but we also have changed completely the color. Our transition is completely different. It's very bright. We're going to stop for now our work on this painting, and we're going to continue in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, we will really appreciate if you could click on like and subscribe to our channel. It will also help us very much if you could leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.